praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm new here. <laughs> Have we got anyone here for the first time today? Can you just put your hand up? We have a couple of here. Praise God. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look at that baby. Eh? Praise God. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Um, this is my first week. One week down. <laughs> As most of you know, Pastor Steve and Wendy are in America, and on Facebook I can see they're having a good time in New York and uh, enjoying themselves. Um, so I'm here for till the 3rd of September, and uh, I just believe that during this time, you know, you say, some of you might say, why did you come? You know, but you know, I need some time out as well. I need to be refurbished, refreshed, to go back into what I'm doing in Indonesia. So. Um, it's a good time for me, but it's also a good time for you because while the cat's away, the mouse can go again. We can, you know, because I do things different. We all have different ways and different things that God works in our lives. And so um, we want to conduct, uh, maybe we can bring that up on the screen, Kate. Starting on Tuesday, here in the church at 7 o'clock, but we're going to have some worship just informal worship. We're going to do four weeks every Tuesday night for four weeks until I leave, living in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have some registration forms here. It costs $20, but that money goes towards your study notes, and at the end of it, we're going to give you a certificate. And the last Sunday that I'm here, we're going to have you all come out, and we're going to get you to share what God's shown you and what God's doing in your life, okay? So it's not just information. We want to teach you how to minister in the anointing, how to minister in the Holy Spirit, because Jesus continues his ministry on the earth through the power of the Spirit. Amen? But he works through people. Nothing happens until we take the step of faith, until we step out, then the Holy Spirit begins to work. Many of us are waiting for God to do it, but God requires you to get out of the boat and begin to walk in the supernatural. So the Tuesday nights will be dedicated to learning how to minister effectively in the power of the Spirit of God. Um, I developed this over probably seven years of travelling and ministry, also in Papua New Guinea for 22 years, travelling in and out, and Indonesia, and how the Spirit of God moves. So this is about, this is not like information, it's not just going to be an overload of information. It's about you learning how to flow and minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's not going to be a flip-flop meeting. Some people think, oh, all you're going to do is have, you know, go a bit crazy. We're going to teach the Word, but we want you to, to move maturely and effectively in the Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit wants results in people's lives. Amen? How many times do you pray for people and they, oh, I feel the presence of God, I feel the touch, but nothing happens? You know? We, we, we've got to learn how to take the power of God and begin to minister it effectively. Um, just recently, uh, I've been into China for a few weeks. I didn't get invited by a church, but I went in there to uh, visit my wife, some of her family that we actually led to Jesus in Indonesia. So we went as like a follow-up to help them. We took Bibles in, and uh, one of my wife, my wife will be here in about a week and a half, so praise God, eh? So I think I look pretty good today, eh? Lost a little bit of weight, had a shave, found the razor in the bag. My wife put it in the bag. She said to me this morning, oh, you look so handsome. Thank you, darling. So we went into China, and there was a particular auntie of my wife that was bedridden. She had high blood pressure and had all sorts of complications. And I said, can I pray for you? She said, yes. And so we went in and we just laid hands and commanded that, that, that thing to leave her body in the name of Jesus. Because a lot of high blood pressure is caused by a spirit. I'll tell you that now. Okay? I've seen many people get free of blood pressure because it comes through anxiety. That tormenting spirit begins to work in your mind. Well, we declared healing in the name of Jesus. And I turned around, big faith man I was, I turned around and walked out the door. And she rolled off the bed and jumped up. Whoa! She was completely healed. I turned around and she's, woo! And she took us out for lunch. <laughs> but, but what happened was, what happened was, what happened 
happened was we had the opportunity of, of, of giving them the Word of God, a Bible, and she wanted us to pray for all the family. So we're able to lay hands and minister to the family. We're able, we're able to go to several cities and we led some people to the Lord. We're able to minister to the sick. There's a great move of God happening over there. They're ready for the gospel. They're open to the gospel. And uh, I heard during the week that Michelle, is that right, Lord? Is she in China now? Sorry? I haven't been there. <laughs> you know, has anyone been to China? You go into a town, like they say, oh, we'll go to the next town. Six million people. <laughs> That's a town, yeah. It's just amazing. But I think, just for a minute, we should pray for Michelle. Right? Because, you know, that nation is open for the Word of God. And we, everywhere we went, people were just open. We are sitting in the foyers of hotels. My wife speaks pure Mandarin and Hokkien, so she's interpreting what I'm saying, but now she can preach herself, so she changes the message, you know. It's now. <laughs> but we're able to minister to people the gospel. And it's just really powerful. Let's just pray for Michelle. Father, we just thank you this morning for China, Lord, that this nation that's rising up, Lord, is a, on the world stage. Father. And Father, we just pray for, for Michelle who's in there at this moment. Father, we ask God that, that you just give her that, uh, that boldness to share Jesus with those people. We ask for divine safety and protection upon her life. We thank you, Jesus, that her ministry is effective, but not just effective, but Lord, also to affect her heart. That Father, while she's there, that Lord, that you're able to work in her life and able to uh, install things into her spirit, Lord, and build things into her life for the future. We just commit it to you. We just declare the anointing of the Holy Spirit flows from her, Lord, and touches lives. We just thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> well, that was a bit of a... I went diverted then, but um, I have some registration forms here for living in the power of, of the Holy Spirit. Does anyone want to go? We've already got some people booked in. Um, Mike, would you be able to take a couple of these? Anyone like a copy of this now? Yeah. A registration? Uh, we're going to have two sessions each night, but we'll stop for a 15 minute cup of coffee or something like that. I've done this seven times in Indonesia, and let me say this to you. Every time we've done it, the glory and the power of God's manifest. There have been times when there was a young young boy, not young boys, 18 or 20. He's sitting in the front row. We had 20, 23 students. And he's sitting in the front row. And I was talking about how to release the power of God. Authority releases the power of God. That's just a secret. Jesus gave them authority and power. So as they stepped out in that authority of Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit began to flow. And as I began to teach about it, he, he started to shake in his chair like this, like vibrate. Not watching him. He, he can help. Help. <laughs> What's the matter? Can't move. And then he began to speak in tongues. God baptized him in the Holy Spirit, just sitting in his chair. And now, God's using him in China. He's gone to China. And, you know, we didn't even pray for him, but the Spirit of God, because there was an atmosphere of faith, and we allow the Holy Spirit to move. Nothing happens till you authorize him. You know that? We're all waiting on God to do something. He's waiting on you to give him the authority. Amen? That's what prayer is. We actually allow God to work in our life. Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you commit on earth. He gave it to us. And he's waiting for us as a church to walk in that. And see the spirit of God move. Amen. I'm preaching, but it's good. So Tuesday night, come along. We'll have a really awesome time. Uh, during the week, I managed to meet uh, Phil and Jan popped into the church. And I'm here almost every day, guys. Um, I just hang out because I've got nothing at home. <laughs> so I just come here and hang out. But Phil and Jan dropped in during the week. And they're doing a great job. And I know the area that they're in. I've been there. And how hard it is and challenging it is. And Jan just wanted to say how much she appreciates your support, your giving and, and helping me. Amen. So on behalf of Phil and Jan, she just says thank you guys very much. And I'm excited to see Aussies out there in the mission field serving Jesus Christ. 
All right, a couple of more things. Where's Brett? Brett conducted a men's group on Friday night, and I know it was a chilly night, but Justin and I went up there, and he had a great log fire burning, and we camped the night up there, and then we watched the DVD, it's called Killing Lions, the campfire. Bit of a strange name, isn't it, after this line that was on TV. But we watched two of the two sections of the DVD and it really stimulated some things in my life about being a man. And it really challenged me that we have to be men. Men has to have character. Amen? A bit of character in their life and how to train the younger ones to be men. And the killing the lions is particular tribe in Africa, isn't it, Brett, that, that to be a man they have to kill a lion. We don't kill lions here, but it's quite a challenge. And we had a great time. I encourage the guys, get along to that DVD series. It's really powerful. It's only, it's not an hour session, it's like a five minute session and then a discussion. But it was really good, an eye opener for me, how soft our community has become. Eh? Like one guy says that we've spent so much trying, time trying to build people's self-esteem that it's backfired didn't work. You know, you know that phase that went through about 10 years ago? Got to make people feel nice, feel good, all this sort of stuff. It backfired on society. It's now we've become a very self-centered society demanding our own rights. So I encourage you guys to go along and support that. When's the next one? Next Friday. Whereabouts? Here, seven. I'll be here, bro, because I really, I really got blessed by that. Oh, there's so many things to talk about, eh? We'll get to the word in a moment. Um, where's Ian? My brother Ian, is he there? You know, Ian, up in the front of the art room there? He's, he's looking not, for... He's not well. He's not well? Okay. He's looking for some used mobile phones. He wants to gather a, a, a whole bunch of used phones that you don't use, sitting at home mobile phones, and if you can give it to him, because he wants to take it out and give it into the mission. So if you've got some old phone sitting in your cupboard or up on the shelf, just give it to him and he'll give it to the poor people and help them get out there. Alright, um, I think that's about it for now. Well, I've got an house, so. Okay, Cody, where are you? We're just going to take a little bit of time to look at the Word of God, but this morning, before we close, we're going to take about 10 minutes to pray for people. Uh, there's some people that I've asked this morning to join us to pray for you. If you need healing, or you have something in your life that you need prayer about, whether it's situations, whatever, we want to take about 10 minutes, and we just want to pray with you this morning. Okay, so just prepare your heart. If you need healing, just prepare your heart. When I come, I'm going to receive from you. Amen? We want to see the power of God. We want to see people's life. Alright, so... Let's start on this. In the next four weeks, um, every Sunday morning, I'm going to be doing a series. It's called Living the Jesus Life. And uh, so I won't finish it today. I'll finish it by the time I leave. But what we're going to do is we're going to explore from the Word of God how to live this Jesus life. You might call it being a Christian. But, you know, Christianity has this dogma now, this stigma that it's another religion, it's another organisation, it's just another form. So I, I believe it's not so much an organisation, it's Jesus Christ himself. Amen? You are called to walk with Jesus, you are called to live in Jesus. Jesus has to be the centre of everything. Not another book of rules, not another book of regulations, but the new creation walking in Christ. Amen? Amen. And so I want to talk a little bit over the next few weeks that you have a responsibility to live and walk in Christ. You do. We have a, a major a conflict that goes on in our life dealing with that old man, that, that self-nature that wants to dominate everything. And a lot of times we think we have to live from there. We imitate Jesus. But you know, you try to be a Christian, you imitate how we should love and how we should behave, and then a week goes by or two weeks and get back to what we were before because you can't train the old man. Jesus crucified the old man on the cross. You died with Christ. Amen? 
the key to walking the Jesus life is allowing the life of Jesus that's inside of us to dominate our thinking and our behaviour. He's already put his life in us. He's already put his spirit in us. Amen? And so what I want to do is talk about Christ in you. I have a scripture that we need to look at. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, just for a moment. I've been, you know, I mean, Steve Sandilands, I'm thinking, how old was I when you first met me, Steve? I must have been. It's the same height, wasn't I? <laughs> I was young. But, you know, I go back a long way in the Foursquare Church. My parents were pastors. And I've been ministering for over 30 years, traveling and ministering. And you meet a lot of people. You, you meet a lot of pastors. You, lot of, you see a lot of things happen. You see a lot of shipwrecks. You see people that... You know, one day they're on fire, the next day they're not on fire. Or the next day they're living like the devil, you know. Or there's characters, characteristics that sort of shock us. And you know, I've seen people everywhere I go desperate for change. They don't like who they are. They don't like their behaviour. They want to live right. They want to do right. They want to, they want to express the life that Jesus has given us. And so what they do, what I used to do is I go to the prayer line. And I said, please pray. God, change me. God, change me. He already changed me on the inside. Amen? I've become a new creation in Christ. But the outer man, that, that old nature wants to dominate and wants to rule and, and control everything. And the only way you can change, of all the years that I've, I've sat under the Word and I've, my parents passed, the only way you can change is... It says here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen? All scripture comes from God. And what is the purpose of scripture? It's not for information overload. It's to bring change. Amen? The word of God will change you. If you don't read the Bible or study the word of God or put it in your life, you will never change. You will live as you are till the day you die. You'll be a spiritual baby for the rest of your life. All scripture came from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Inspired by the Holy Spirit. And what is it for? For teaching us. To give us instruction. How to live. How to walk. How to behave. It's for reproof. For correction. And for instruction in righteousness. That tells me change. Correction means change. Amen? Why do you correct your child? So that they change the way they behave. And the Word of God is put there to bring change. But if we never allow the Word of God to work in our life, the Holy Spirit can't bring change. You live and die like you are. And the Spirit of God's in you. Christ is in you. All the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, but it's like it sits there dormant because you just run the show yourself. Amen? And the love never flows. The joy is never there. We're never effective as a Christian. Our witness is, is an absolute failure. People look at us and say, oh, you're a Christian. You just live like me. And we're all, God, change me. You wake up, you feel sorry for yourself and give up. <laughs> Go to the Word of God. Because the Word of God is given to you to cause you to be corrected. Amen? Can I have an amen? amen. Don't get excited. I mean, you know, I mean, there's some, there's some people here that have been in ministry. You would agree with that, eh? The Word of God is what changes people. It's either PC or BC, eh, Harold? I read his little article. It's politically correct or biblically correct. It's biblically correct. Amen? Yeah. What the Word of God is. In the Amplified, it says, Every scripture is God-breathed. It's given by His inspiration. It's profitable for instruction, for reproof, for conviction of sin, for correction of error, discipline to be obedient. And it trains us in righteousness. That means to live right. And then it says, in holy living, in conformity to God's will, in the way we think, our purpose, and our action, so that every person may become complete and mature, proficient, well-fitted, 
thoroughly equipped for every good work. So as we look at the Word of God over the next four weeks, the Word of God has the power to change you. Books are good. I like reading books. I don't read many nowadays. I used to read a lot of books. Books will inspire you. Books will encourage you. But the Word of God will change you. Amen. Amen. I read the Bible over and over now. I have on my phone the Bible and I put it on in the morning. Sometimes 2 o'clock in the morning I put on you know, Colossians or Ephesians, and I just let it play over and over, and I wake up back and forth like, you know, what's going on there? But I listen to the Word of God, I read the Word of God, I just keep feeding on the Word of God, because all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen? What's contained in here comes from God. And you feed upon this, the Spirit of God can work in your life. Amen? Amen. So let's begin today by opening our Bibles. If you have a Bible, I encourage you to get a Bible if you don't have one. Colossians <coughs> chapter 1. And we're going to talk about, mainly the whole teaching is based on Colossians, living the Jesus life. <coughs> and we're going to look at what the scripture says, not my opinion, not your opinion, not some book's opinion, but what does God's word say so that it can bring change in our Amen. Colossians, um, the actual place, city of Colossia, was about 100 kilometers from Ephesus. Paul had never been to Colossia. He'd never been there. Epaphras was a, a guy that was a, trained by Paul. He went out from Ephesus and founded the ministry there, preached the gospel. Do you know, have you read in the Bible where Paul was at the school of Tyrannus every day in Ephesus, teaching the word every day, and it said he did it for two years. Paul didn't leave Ephesus. He stayed in one place for two years and he taught at the school of Tyrannus. He just taught. That's what it says. We have this picture. He went out and did crusades and he had programs and events and he just <laughs> taught the word of God. People that heard the word of God, they went out into the mission field. And for two years, he went to the house every day. And he's taught the word of God. Isn't that interesting? We have this concept, we've got to do all this. But the word has the power to change it. And Paul didn't have to run out wearing himself out. People came, he taught them the word of God. That's why he laid hands on cloths in Ephesians 19. He laid hands on the cloths. And those cloths would be put on the set and they got healed because he didn't go out there. They would come in and he would pray for them. They would go back to Colossae and they'd lay it on the sick and they'd get healed. And so Colossae was the product of Paul's ministry because it said all of Asia heard the gospel in two years. And yet Paul never moved from that place. Isn't that interesting? Because the purpose of the word of God is that you can go out and do something for Jesus. Amen? It's not about me doing it all. It's about you taking the word of God and reaching out to others. Your neighbours, your workplace, wherever you are. Let me say this to you. There's no reason we should fight against the government to try to stop this new wave of demonic stuff that's going across the world, and that is gay marriage. You know, we don't fight a system. We're not called to fight a system, we're called to proclaim the Word of God. The Word of God, if it's not proclaimed, won't, can't bring change. God can't change you unless the Word of God comes. You can't get saved unless the Word of God comes. Amen? How are they going to get saved if they've never heard? And how are they going to hear unless somebody preaches? And who's going to preach? Those that go out. And so the Word of God has the power to change. We need to bring the Word of God back to the forefront in the church so that people can change. People can get saved. Amen? Salvation is change. <laughs> so we need you need to preach the word. You need to put the word of God as a top priority. It's the only thing God works with. Praise God. You thought I was going to be nice and sweet today, but I am. Praise God. Colossians chapter 1. Uh, I want to read verse 3 and 4. It says, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, 
since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have towards the saints. Now, Paul starts this off to this church, these group of people, and this letter is for us. Let's take it for us. It's the word of God speaking to us. He said, I heard, because he had never been there. And in chapter 2, he actually said, you have never seen my face. He'd never been there. And so he said, we heard about your faith in Christ, and we heard about how much you love people. Over the next four weeks, we're going to talk about these two very important parts of our life. I believe that they are probably the foundation. Faith in God and love toward people. The scriptures do not say have faith in people. If you have faith in people, they will fail you. You will get discouraged and you will walk away. It doesn't say have faith in people. It says have love towards people because it will cover their weaknesses and their habits, etc. Amen? We need to understand that. I used to try to have faith in a preacher and faith in everything that people said and then they'd let me down and then, oh, 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 what's going on? It doesn't tell you to do that. It says have faith in Christ, have faith in God and just love the people. But love believes the best of people, doesn't it? Like Alva said. Love me, say you love me. Love, me. <laughs> <laughs> love believes the best of people. Amen? <laughs> But I don't build my faith in Elvis. My faith is in Jesus. My life is founded on a person. Not a religion, not an organisation, but a living person who's raised from the dead. He's Lord. And my life, my faith is in Him. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He'll never let me down. He loves me unconditionally. Hey, when the warts start showing and the weakness, He still loves me. Maybe you may not but you're commanded to love me. So you can see the two important factors in our life, faith in God and love towards one another. And that's how the church should be founded. And Paul was really excited about this because he said, I heard about your faith in Jesus and I heard about the love you have towards me. And now let's just go down to verse... Verse 27 of chapter 1. We're going to look at the scripture today. Amen. We're going to let the word of God speak to us. I love reading the Bible, honestly. I just, I have it on my phone. I have an iPad. I have the Bible on my iPad. You know, I have, <laughs> I carry the Bible with me in my little bag because I carry a bag. People think, oh yeah, what's that about? But in Indonesia, you've got to carry your passport and all your identity with you everywhere you go. So I carry a Bible with it as well. So the Word of God is very important to me. So we believe that God's going to speak to you. So in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, Paul was talking about his ministry. We don't have time to read all the scriptures, but he's talking about his ministry. And he said that God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The mystery, the mystery was Jesus Christ came and he died and he rose from the dead. That was the mystery. They didn't know, even when Jesus went to the cross, the disciples still didn't understand what was really happening. But it was when he was raised from the dead and the Spirit of God came upon them and in them, then they began to see, ah, this is what God's mystery, God's secret, this is what God's plan is. So Paul said, my ministry is to let everyone know Christ in you. Christ in you. The Spirit of Christ living in you. Salvation is not works, it's Christ in you. And the works are the product of Christ in you. Amen? You don't try the works to get Christ in you. You receive Christ and He changes the way you live. The mystery is Christ in you. This, the devil was even confused by it all. Because Jesus had to come, pay for our sin, sanctify us, cleanse us, so that then the Spirit of God could come and live in us. The Spirit of Christ. Paul calls it the Spirit of Christ. We can call Him the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. 
But he comes to live in us now, and Christ now lives in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that Christ can begin to live through me. So that rather than me trying to develop this old nature to be like Jesus, I allow Jesus to live in me. I become a Jesus person. I allow the life of Jesus to live in me. And so here in verse 28, this is Paul's purpose. If you read the book of Colossians, there's some great stuff. He said, whom we preach. The next scripture, if that's okay. Verse 28. Whom we preach. Him we preach. Who is the him? Does anyone know? <laughs> Jesus. He said, that's our message. Because if Jesus can come and live in you, change can happen in you. Amen. That was God's mystery. That was the plan of God, was so that you could receive Christ. The Amen. power, the Spirit of God living in you. And Paul said, we preach Jesus. I'm not preaching 15 steps to victory. It's Christ is our victory, the Bible says. Amen? In Him is our victory. Thanks be unto God who causes us to triumph through Christ. Christ is, is the focal point of everything that we need in our life. Not another set of rules or another inspired message, but Jesus Christ came to live in me so he could then work through me. That's God's idea. That's God's plan. But we spend, spend our life spinning our wheels trying to be good and trying to do this and trying to do that, and we fail in our natural ability. But the moment we abide in him and he abides in us, we bring forth much fruit, for without Him we can do nothing. And so the mystery is Christ coming to live in you by the Spirit of God. And because of your union with Christ, He begins to transform and change the other man. Amen? And so we see here, Paul's, Paul's ministry, he said, we preach Christ and we warn every person, teaching every person in all wisdom, so that we may present every person perfect in Christ Jesus. Mature. Amen? So this is his ministry. Okay? What's your ministry? This is the ministry. He's, he, said, he said, my purpose is to preach Jesus Christ, to teach you, to instruct you how to be mature in Christ. Isn't that awesome? I think it is anyway. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Christianity, I've written some things. Christianity is not becoming an imitation of Jesus, but it is the life flow and the nature and character of Christ in us. You can only love by His love. You can't love with your natural love, it fails. You'll love somebody till they do something to harm you or offend you, then you stop loving them. But the, the love of God loves them no matter what. They abuse you, they can. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, mighty man of God, I, I like his, his teachings and that, very Christ-centered. There was a time in his life when he was so abusive to his wife that she took him out, she, he took his wife outside and locked her out of the house and she slept near the door in the snow until he opened the door the next morning. And she got in and cooked him breakfast and showed him up. That impacted his heart that she loved him, no matter how much he abused him. It caused him to change. Amen? We don't have snow here, so guys, you can do it. Amen? Now, the word, the word here, perfect, in the Greek, is teleos, which means to grow up mentally and morally in your character, to become complete. So not just you know, oh, I'll put up with you. But it affects the whole part of your life, the way you think, the way you conduct yourself. That we have to be mature in Christ. We have to know how to live that life that Jesus has called us for. Amen? Praise God. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. We're just looking at Scripture at the moment. Colossians chapter 2. And I'm going to read... Verse, there's, there's so much in here, right? Verse 5, I'll start with verse 5. Let me just get my drink. Diane made me a nice cup of tea.
you say, oh, that's really irreverent. No, it's not. <laughs> Many churches I preach in Indonesia, they bring a cup of coffee up to you while you preach. They serve coffee and cake, and you're going, oh, you not have lunch. I enjoy that. That's why my ministry expanded so quickly. <laughs> All right. Paul said, though I am absent in the flesh, I'm with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. So Paul had never met them, okay? But he said, I rejoice that you have faith in Christ. Your faith is secure in Christ. It's all about Jesus. Now, I could talk about Jesus, you know, who he is. He's the express image of God. Amen? He's God, the creator. Came and walked amongst us, eh? God. God said, I want to be with my people. I want to get down there. I want to, I want to be with amongst you. So he came. Well, he is. And we call him Jesus. And now we can walk with him every day because he lives in us through the power of the Spirit. And it says there in verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in Him. Verse 6. As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in Him. Amen. We'll just wait for that other verse to come up. Verse 6. It's coming. And now, just as you accepted Christ as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Now, that's not a correct translation. I don't know what that is. But it actually says you must walk in Him. It's talking about abiding in Him and He abides in you. It's not that He's walking over here and I'm walking there and we're apart. We've become one. Christ in you is that mystery. Christ is in you to change you, to work through you. And so in the King James it says... As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in Him. That means you have to have your life, your behaviour, your conduct, everything you are, in Him. As He is. How He loves. How He behaves. How He talks. Everything is Christ now. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in the battery. We'll go through that over the next few weeks. Verse 7 is what I want to talk about before we finish in about five, six minutes. Verse 7, it says here, walk in him. Rooted. You hear me? Yep. Praise God. Okay, the next scripture, please. Verse 7. It says that we should be rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding with thanksgiving. So, I think you can see from the Scripture, Paul is saying you have to walk in Christ. Your whole life has to be Jesus Christ in your life. Amen? The word rooted, it means to strike a root. It means to... Cause roots to break forth. It says we have to be rooted first and then we become built up. I lived in the Northern Territory for quite a few years and I had the great pleasure of moving palm trees from one location to another location. And I thought a palm tree is so easy you can pull it out of the ground. But when I started to dig, this little skinny palm tree, about, you know, eight inches. You figure out the metric. About eight inches. And on the bottom of it, it had a root system that was like massive. It took us a whole bunch of guys to lift the thing up and put it on the truck. Oh, what the heck? Skinny little tree, but a massive root system. And the Bible says in Psalms that we are to flourish like a palm tree. Now, a palm establishes its roots first. And then it begins to grow. And I've trans, trans, uh, translated them, I was going to say. 
I relocated them into my garden. And for the first few months, they looked like they'd gone to heaven. You know, it's like, I might have to do a reversal of what Jesus did, you know. Not curse it, but raise up. And then after a few months or six months, out comes this nice green shoot, and then more, and then it starts to grow. I couldn't, oh, these are strange plants. But it had to be rooted first. It had to establish the root system. Now, you know that a palm tree, you can see, I've been through some cyclones up there, a, a palm tree doesn't move. Good old gum tree, gone, you know? down it goes. But the palm tree, you can't move it, it bends like that. And God says that we're like a palm tree. The winds, the storms of life come against us, and if your roots are well rooted, you'll just bend a bit and come back up again. Amen? <coughs> and that's why we have to be rooted. We have to have that foundation in our life so that we can then begin to grow up, begin to be built up in Christ. Amen? Some of you haven't. Going to church is not enough. It's important because we can teach the Word. But it's what you do during the week. Amen? Pick your Bible up sometime. And just read. Just choose a little book. Read James. Oh, it's a bit heavy for you, probably. <laughs> read Ephesians or read something. And just let that Word begin to work in your heart. And it will start to show you things. It will start to reveal things. It starts to work and begin to bring some change in your life. And so Paul says here, You've received Christ. Now your life has to be dominated and ruled by Jesus Christ. So you need your roots to go down. You need to get established here so that you can grow up. And I think that's just awesome, isn't it? But I like the next bit. He says, and established in the faith. There's that word faith again. Paul said, I heard of your faith in Christ. I heard of your steadfastness of your faith. And then he said, this now, if you can be rooted and built up in Jesus Christ and be established in faith. Amen. We're going to talk about faith a little bit over the next few weeks. Faith is not the ability to manipulate God to do what you want him to do. Let's get rid of that thought. Many people, when it's time for a problem, now we need to pray. We need to manipulate God. Faith is not to manipulate God. Faith, let's look at Noah. It says, by faith, Noah obeyed God. Faith is obedience to God's word. Amen? It's obedience. It's obedience. And Noah had to do something for 120 years, didn't he? He didn't sit back and twiddle his thumbs and we're going to let God do it. God, you fix my problem. Fix my marriage, God. God, please change my life. You know what God does? He gives you wisdom. He gives you wisdom how to live in your marriage. Amen? I'm saying this because a lot of people have this, this concept that God is like a magic formula to all their problems. Let me tell you, He gave us His Word to correct us, to teach us, to help us, to cause us to stand up. And the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God, gives us the wisdom to deal with things in our life. Pray God pray for my son. I've got change, Justin. It doesn't work. I ain't nothing with that. It doesn't work. Hey? Gypsy Justin. But the word of God will change it. Amen? All I've got to do is get him connected with the word of God and the Holy Spirit can begin to work. Do you need changing, Justin? Maybe. We all do, eh? All right. Praise God. Right, quickly to the next verse in your praise. Oh, the last part of that scripture it says, abound with praise. Abound with thanksgiving. Hey, isn't that awesome? Verse 8, and we'll finish. Beware lest any person spoil you through philosophy or vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. In the King James, Oh, it even has it up here. What's the first word? Beware. Beware. Okay. Okay. People, when you leave today, beware. At the front door, there's a big hole. It's 10 feet deep. Beware, okay? So beware is really important. Paul said, beware. 
The devil is going to try to get you off of that walk in Christ and get you back into the flesh doing religious stuff. There's no power in it. There's no power to change it. You can try to be good at all you want, and there's no power in it until you submit to Jesus Christ in your life and begin to let the Spirit of God work. Amen? Look, many of us have lived on this earth long enough. So beware lest anyone cheat you. In the, uh, in the King James it says, spoil you. Has your mother ever said to you, I've cooked a really good dinner, don't spoil it by putting tomato sauce on it? Uh, yeah, you ever hear that? Mum used to say, don't spoil it, put the tomato sauce on No, it's a good meal. So that's what Paul's saying. He said, don't let anyone spoil Christ in your life. Don't let them ruin the work of Jesus Christ in your life. And they'll do it through philosophy. What is philosophy? Man's philosophy is man's interpretation of life and who we are and how we live and there's lots of it going on out there. As soon as you meet people, oh, you haven't caught up with you, you meet them in the morning, how are you doing, da, 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 and they tell you the secret to their life. Investment. Invest. And a pastor in New Guinea was advised to invest. You'll make a lot of money. I say, what does God say? If God tells you to do it, it'll work. If it don't, don't do it. But this pastor sold his house put all his money into the stock market. Kaboom. Lost, lost everything. And then, where are you, God? <laughs> you know? Because of the philosophy of the Word. The Word of God is our standard. If the Spirit of God tells you to do it, let's do it. Ask Him. He's, he is Lord. Amen? He should be the one directing our lives. I won't get too much. Vain deceit. Does it say that? Empty deceit. That means people say things that just deceive you and take you away from who Christ is in your life. Amen? The tradition of man. What is the tradition of man? Now, you all have traditions. Some of you have some really crazy traditions. We have Christmas is a tradition, isn't it? It's a tradition, a tradition of man. Jesus never invented it. We did. You go over to Indonesia and they have Ramadan and it's become like Christmas there. Now they have all the green balls and they have all the Christmas type of decorations. So they're now introducing our tradition into their tradition and it's like, what the? Because it's a flesh thing, isn't it? What's Christmas about? It's about holiday and party and family. That's what we're told. But Jesus didn't die on the 25th of... Uh, he wasn't born on the 25th of December. Right? He wasn't born then. If, if you want to know when Christmas came, why it came, the Catholic Church introduced it. Because the pagans used to celebrate on the 25th of December, a paganistic ritual. So that's what Christmas was, Christ Mass. On the 25th, they introduced Mass, Christ Mass, on the 25th of December to counterattack that other paganistic. Now, everybody, oh, Jesus was born on the 25th of December. He wasn't born on that day. But it's okay to celebrate. It's a good time to focus and remember Jesus. Amen? Amen. So it has its good and it has its strange stuff. I didn't mean to share that, but I did. <laughs> But there are lots of traditions that actually take you away from that union with Jesus Christ. And you just live a false life. You live in this natural world trying to be a Christian, trying to... I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I go to church. I, I, I go to church. I'm a Christian. But does Christ look in you? Christian is Jesus Christ inside a person who lives. And I'm going to finish there, but we'll continue next week to talk about it a bit more so that we can understand who we are and who he is in us. Because he's awesome. You know, it gets really complicated, people, if you follow the flesh trying to serve God. It gets really confusing because the natural mind can't understand the things of God. We're called to live by faith. We're called to believe what he says in his word. Amen? In a few moments, we're going to just take...
10 minutes to pray for them. If you need healing in your body, if you have any form of sickness, we're going to obey the Bible. Amen? Faith is obedience. Amen? Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We allow the Holy Spirit opportunity to minister in this place this morning. I can't heal. I can't fix your problems, but I know someone who can. And so we just want to make that time available. Maybe we can sing one song first. There is power in the name of Jesus. Would you be able to play the guitar? Right? We're going to let the Spirit of God just begin to minister into your life. Some of you are carrying some wounds, some things in your life that you struggle with. Holy Spirit can work in your life, amen? You? you need prayer for your family, you need prayer for whatever it is. We're going to allow the Spirit of God to begin to minister to you this morning. So let us just stand a bit. You can play on your own, bro. Right? Hey? Just stand. And we're going to sing, There is Power in the Name of Jesus. And as we sing it, if you need prayer this morning, we just want you to come out quickly. Because we're only going to take about 10 minutes. And we're just going to minister to you this morning. And I've, I've asked some people here this morning to help me. Because it's the Spirit of God. It's not me. It's the Spirit of God that works through people. Amen. Now let's just sing this. If you need prayer this morning. If you've, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. If you've never said, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord. I want you to come and live in my life. Then this morning is a great time to receive. Amen. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit and, and spoken that heavenly language of the Spirit of God this morning, you can receive it. Be filled with the Spirit of God. So whatever you need, you just come and we'll just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you this morning. Jesus name.